producers behind the scenes at Score North and 1500 ESPN have sports opinions. So they want you to hear them. It's the perfect digital sports soapbox to scratch that Minnesota sports itch. This is the Score North Taxi Squad. Joke's on you, Denver. We didn't want first place in the Western Conference anyway. First is the worst, second is the best. Na 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 boo boo. Okay, I'm going to stop acting like I'm in kindergarten and act like an actual professional adult. Hi, everyone. Welcome into the Score North Taxi Squad. My name is Jason Stormer, joined along Artis Woods and Grant Wangstern. Guys, welcome back to the program. Another week of Minnesota sports to discuss. Obviously, a ton to discuss with your Minnesota Timberwolves. Falling, unfortunately, to the Denver Nuggets with the number one seed on the Western Conference on the line. It was a pretty good game through pretty much three quarters, gentlemen, but eventually I think the Denver Nuggets experience and pedigree ultimately pulled away from maybe a little inexperience on the Timberwolves side. But welcome into the program, guys. How you feeling? And also, how are you feeling about the probable fact that your Minnesota Timberwolves are not going to be the number one seed going into the playoffs in the Western Conference? I'm feeling good overall, man. I mean, it is what it is. We we want it to be the one seed. You know, we're not going to hide the fact that we want to be the one seed, right? Right. Like, you know, you went into that game hoping to seal the deal and it didn't happen. You know, the Nuggets are the Nuggets. I still feel like you could beat the Nuggets in the playoff series, but we'll get to that in a second. It's going to be a challenge, though. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> it'll be a challenge. You know, yeah. I'm feeling a little less. You know, last episode, I was very optimistic. Like, Oh, let's get it. You know, this episode, I'm like, all right, <laughs> <laughs> taper back just a touch. <laughs> but I'm still confident that it could be done, you know. Yeah. Um, but. You get the two seed, I'll take that. It, it's still like a historic season for the Timberwolves at the end of the day. Like, it's been a while since they have been this good and finished the, the regular season with Never this many this wins. Game. Yeah. Never, so, record-wise. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, I'm still, you know, I still will be happy, you know, as a Wolves fan to finish the number, with the number two seed and still with the chance to make a run at the end of the day. So, feeling good, man. Yeah, I'm feeling good pretty – well, actually, you, you go ahead. I introduced the show. What do you have to <laughs> have to say oh, about oh, the Timberwolves? Oh. Or did I get you I'm, off guard? I'm, I'm, no, I'm sorry. Didn't. I just jumped no. right in, but um, you hadn't said I'm anything gonna, yet. I'm going to play off who I believe it was Mike <laughs> Conley last night or somebody they quoted before the game that they said how excited they were about the potential for the number one seed. And then after the game, they kind of realized, hey, you know what? We're fine. Even at two or even three, this team still talented enough to make a run. And, yes, I think the only thing that really mattered was that one seed. Mm -hmm. Since that's pretty much out of play, two or three doesn't scare me. You're going to have a tough matchup at one, two, or three anyway because all the teams in the West are good. I mean, they're not great, but they're good. They're good. good. So, I, I, yeah, it's a bummer. And I would have liked to rolled through that game and had a little bit more momentum. But that doesn't mean, you know, this team is is ready for the playoffs. They're primed for the playoffs. They're not going to get maybe the the home field, the home court advantage that we wanted. But like I said, I believe it was Conley who they were quoting before and after the game. And after the game, they the players don't even seem they said that they're just, you know, they were hyped about the idea in the beginning. And now they're like, you know what, we're moving on. We've got other things to take care of here. And I like that attitude. So I'm okay with it. Yeah, I'm not going to lose too much sleep over it, too, just because I wasn't too, you know, I wasn't anticipating the Wolves were going to get a win in Denver. I know there was a ton of momentum, especially of how we played last time in Denver as well, just basically blowing out the Nuggets. But I knew it was going to be a different Nuggets team that we were going to face, especially because Jamal Murray was actually in the lineup for them this time around. He was on a minutes restriction, I think, but he was still playing the crucial minutes of the game, you know, late in the fourth quarter. And there were still plenty of times where him and Jokic were doing uh, were both on the bench pretty much at the same time. Uh, But it was there for the Wolves, guys. It really was, especially with the lead in the first quarter. It looks like the Wolves were really incorporating the pick and roll game really well, and I was really liking a lot of the things that they were doing. And what I mentioned um, the last time they were in Denver is that Jokic pretty much had no help in the paint whatsoever, and the Wolves did pretty much that exact same thing to start this game. I believe uh, six of their first eight shots were inside the paint underneath the basket, and I was like, okay, they're attacking Denver exactly like they did last time. But slowly but surely, as the game went on, Denver's experience really just kind of uh, paid off for them. I don't know what it was or what the exact moment was, but sometime in the third quarter before Denver uh, went on that 9-1 run to close the quarter, I just started getting this eerie feeling, and I don't know if just years of Timberwolves scar tissue built up on my heart or something like that, but the feeling just started creeping into my heart. I was like, oh my goodness, I don't know if the Wolves experience is going to be able to you know, power through in this game. I don't know if they're going to have enough to be able to win this game. And ultimately I was right. And Denver really just flexed at the end. I mean, I was kind of bummed actually. I was a little surprised that we pulled our starters so quick, not not necessarily so quick in the fourth quarter. Um, There was still two and a half minutes left, 
but I think we were only down by like 14 or 16. I know like the math is pretty much non-existent in terms of making a comeback in that situation, but I was just a little bit surprised that we pulled our starters um, when we did and didn't at least try to like try one last ditch effort. But at that point, you're right. I mean, we're talking like (laughs) a 0.1% chance. This is just me just wishfully thinking and just hoping, oh, maybe just maybe we could have done something. But yeah, it just wasn't going to work. Like Um, the the way they had the momentum at the end with Bron getting all those like I think that's his last name Braun um, yeah, getting all those, getting I all think those... it's pronounced brown, but it's spelled brown. Yes. brawn. Thank, it, yeah, thank I, I don't you know. So much. It's like I, Ryan I Braun, that, yeah. he was all up. over the court. Dude, yeah, yeah. dunking is, on Rudy, yeah. catching the alley. Like after he got the ad, the, the, the alley, alley, I was yeah. like, yes, yeah, that's, that's, that's it. That's it. That was it's, when they I have stopped. all the momentum. It's in Denver. It kind of is what it is. Like, but, but this is what they do. Were you about to say something? Now, after you about something about in Denver, I have a point on that. Um, this is what they do though. Like mm-hmm. these guys, man, you got to give them credit. Like I said before on the last show, like they did the same thing to the Lakers four straight games. It was a tight game, tight game, tight game. Fourth quarter came around and they just smoked them every single fourth quarter. They are so efficient. Like yeah. I don't know offhand where they rank in the fourth quarter, but like I know come playoff time, they are a team to be feared in the fourth. It's mainly because, you know, Jokic, he gets that ball in the post or anywhere really on the floor. It's like he knows where he's going with the ball before he even catches it. And then, dude, Jamal Murray is a killer. He's a killer. <laughs> yep. Like, you know, he, yeah. he's hitting all the big shots. He's taking all of the big shots. You know, you have certain matchups that you could throw his way, but once he gets it going, it's tough. So, like, the Wolves, they've had late game issues, mm-hmm. you know, post Christmas. It's been pretty yes. bad, like the second worst in the, in the NBA. Yeah. If you go against Denver, that's going to have to improve somehow, some way. I like to think that maybe Cat coming back will help. But, yo, like, it's – Yeah. You got to close – you got to no. figure out a way to, to get some – and, and but, to their defense, they had some looks. Like, you know, Jaden McDaniels had some looks. He just Oh, he couldn't hit the just broad side of a barn. Couldn't hit. He's couldn't back hit to his it. old self. Our, our guy Nas Reed had a terrible game, too. He, he, we have yes, to admit, he, he had a terrible game. And he, he just got did. ejected the night before against Washington. So he's got a, yeah. a couple couple off nights in a row. A mm-hmm. couple off nights that, in a row for him. And then you're saying that against Washington. I love how we're back-to-back against Washington. They're back-to-back back against Utah. Right. Flying home. It, 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 Whatever I, I know that yeah, scheduling no, he, is scheduling is a, is a moot point at this point, but like I'm like come on now, like let's t- that, that 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 plays a big role I think it, in, it in, does. But when your opponent also has the back to back, I mean yeah. I mean what do you do? You're yeah. pretty much in the same boat. It's just they get to sleep in their comfy beds as yeah. opposed to the wolves do. Although they're probably coming put from up Utah in a, though, yeah, you know that, yeah. that you're right. Yeah. That is a pretty coming, short right flight. Right next door, you that know, they, you know they're probably home that night. You know, you know I, what is that? That's probably like Minneapolis to Chicago, right? Yeah, that's that's like that's that's a big whiny excuse. So everybody else. Out there, I just I just wanted to point that out because yeah. it was something I think like, I heard during the broadcast last night. But yeah, mm-hmm. I mean that was a little bit of a bummer. But yeah, so I was hoping more from Nas Reed though. Yeah, I was yeah. really uh, expecting more, especially after he got you know kicked out of the game the night before, having that energy. I was hoping to see more from Nas last night, and yeah. I didn't get it. And that would would have been if he would have came out and busted it, he would have in They'd my have won. Uh, they would have won. They'd yes, won. and he would have been in a real contention for. I know they're going to bring Cat in slowly, mm-hmm. but I and we've talked about this. You've yes. got, I think, you still have to roll with Nas for a little bit here as you bring him back. And I, at I least think for these first two games, that, that might have yeah. put yeah. him back a little bit. But, but speaking of Cat, we can pretty much just bring up the news that was reported today by Woe, which I'll actually bring up what was reported by uh, Shams Sharania earlier today, but then it was preceded by something that Adrian Wojnarowski uh, tweeted out uh, later in the day. Uh, Shams said earlier today that Cat should be back for at least one game. Uh, left of the regular season, Wolves obviously have two, but then Woj later said that Cat will be back for Friday night's matchup against the Atlanta Hawks. Oh, that's at home too, right? That is yes. it. Yeah, both nice. of these last games are at home, so that's best good. Goal, nice. best games are, both games are at home. Oh, yeah, our last two are at home. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Guessing he'll be on a minutes restriction. I don't know if he'll start either of those games, but this is exactly what I was dreaming of having happen when Cat's injury did happen. Obviously, I want him to come back for the season regardless, but if he was going to come back, I wanted him to be back yeah. for at least one of these couple regular season games just so he can, you Shake know, yeah, get the yeah. Ru- get the rust off and stuff, get the gears moving again, and hopefully get back into the swing of things that will ultimately help the Minnesota Timberwolves. I said last week, and I realized how stupid of a statement this was after I listened back to the episode, <laughs> that, uh, that the X factor potentially for the Wolves in the playoffs would be Cat's three-point shooting. Well, no Duh, dummy. He's the best three-point shooter on the team. That's not an X factor. I'll switch that answer now 
to actually maybe saying Cat's defense may mm. be the X factor for the Wolves in the playoffs. Because one thing that concerned me, if we are dreaming of this hypothetical potential matchup that the Wolves and the Nuggets will play in the playoffs this season, that would honestly, that would only be the Western Conference Finals, right? Because if they get the one, the two, that's literally the only scenario in which they can play. What I did notice a lot against Denver last night is that Jokic did put Rudy in the spin cycle multiple times times and how he does that is by drawing Rudy out of the paint Mm -hmm. towards the free throw line and And then then when you get Rudy in that space Jokic is a good enough ball hander where he's going to be able to get by Gobert pretty much every single time but yes yes and and, and he's so and it's so easy too because (laughs) he can actually make the pass as well yeah he just lift it up and top I love it I love it when he holds the ball just over his head for like three seconds at the top of the key then realizes "Ah, I got nothing I'm just gonna drain this three and I swear it's a perfect swish Every, Every time. single time. Yeah. But if you have Carl Anthony Towns back there in the paint when Rudy is drawn out to keep eyes on guys like Aaron Gordon or other guys crashing into the paint like that brown kid, then that changes things for or, the Denver Nuggets. Yes, artist. Or you just have Cat on him in general. That, so that is the Kat other is thing. Out of yes. the paint and Kat, Rudy can stay down in the paint, Kat, which is actually yep. kind of what I prefer. Cat is a much more not, mobile guy. Yeah. I know yep. he's not a lockdown defender, but I much I prefer that matchup against yeah. Jokic opposed to Rudy because. Rudy, and again, he's played sensational this season, so I'm not gonna act as if, you know, if he if they match up, I wouldn't want some, you know, some moments with Rudy on Jokic. But yeah, Jokic was getting money, bro. Like he he made it look easy. You gotta yeah, you gotta throw multiple bodies at Jokic. It can't just be one guy because yeah. eventually he's gonna figure that defender out. And I know yeah. exactly how I'm gonna beat you. But if you throw some doubles here and there, if you throw a couple different guys at him, give him a, a couple different looks, kind of throw him off a bit. It'll keep them, and it'll make them a little bit, a little bit more Fluster. passive, you know, and yeah. fluster them, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. which is kind of essentially what you want, you yeah. know. So, and they did that in previous matchups, but I think he was just like you guys said, dominating he was on a the court last night, and he was dominating the mm. paint. Like we could not, we could not stop him when he was getting the ball in there. He could not stop the rebound. I mean, he was just he, he was, was a force, which he is, which is just obvious. I mean, Captain Obvious over here. But if we, if like you guys said, we meet up with them in the Western Conference Finals. If, you know, let's get through the first round, like I've said since the first time <laughs> I was on this show, because I am excited about this team, yes. Mm-hmm. And we all know this is a big run we could have. But mm-hmm. let's get through that first round. But if we get to that Western Conference Finals with Denver. Oh, all bets are off. All bets are off. Yeah. Yeah. I think, oh, yeah. I'll I think, be yes. like that. I think yeah. this team is, is, is ready. And, you know, yes, we've had our fourth quarter and third quarter struggles, but... Who knows? They might turn. They might turn turn into something. Set, something. Who knows? I, I I'm, I would, I'm all in. I'm I all would in. every now and then. Obviously, Kyle Anderson spell on them defensively as well. Can we talk Jay about the make, three? Jay, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can we talk about the three fouls he had in a single possession against Denver oh, last? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, what yeah. on earth? Yeah. I'm not even kidding. Granted, did you see that too? Yeah. Single yeah. possession. It was one of just the most. Bizarre. It was so strange. Was and for Kyle Anderson, this is a bizarre. guy that doesn't get caught up in foul trouble too often. Just for him to just completely just. I don't know. I, I I really can't explain but it, was, it. But it was, it was Joker a tone center being aggressive, like right. just being aggressive Putting every time he yeah. touched the ball, yeah. like kind of just throwing his body around. Right. But I still kind of, again, I still like that matchup from time to time. Throw Kyle Anderson at him. I'd even debate throwing, you know, Jaden McDaniels at him every now, just every now and then. Every on now and then, switch so when they get switched up, yeah. no, just uh, a just on, a, on on some type of switch, okay. or you yeah. know, just coming down court. Just, you know, just again, just a different look. Right. Just a different body, you yeah, know what I mean? and just make speed, you think. Maybe. Okay, yeah. this guy, I got to beat with my speed. Yep. You know. Yep. Okay, this guy, <laughs> I could just shoot over the top. Okay, this guy, I could just bang down low with. But make him make that split decision in the moment. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. And make it and make it difficult for him. Jokic is Jokic. He's probably he he knows, but still make it as difficult as possible. That's you know. But be- before we before we continue, I have to get this off my chest. We talked about it off the air. Uh huh. It's really irrelevant. But it's it's on point, and I need to talk about it. The broadcast last night yeah. drove me up a wall. Specifically yeah, the drove, ESPN broadcast, the everyone. ESPN, the ESPN broadcast, bro. not the Valley Sports broadcast, oh, well, the, the national have, broadcast. I don't have yes. the, you know. The local, yeah, the local channel. Yeah, so, yeah. I, yeah. you know. I want to just make that distinction. I have to watch the games other ways. But. Mm-hmm. Dude, oh my goodness. I love how you're like, this is like news to you. Like, Dude, this just, is why I don't watch ESPN. This is why I chose specifically not to watch those announcers. I, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yes, because no this is the type announcers. of treatment we in Minnesota get if the Yankees are playing the Twins, if the Timberwolves are playing, let's just say Denver or Chicago or LA. Any Minnesota team playing a big market team or a better team is going to get blasted on by every single national media market because that is how it goes. And that is why I chose, and I know we don't like Bally's, 
But I chose to watch it on Valley's because I like Jim. I like our guys. Yes. And they're going to be a little bit, I know one would say biased, but I feel like I'm not going to have to deal with the nonsense that you guys were talking about. It was, and, it was absurd. And, and normally, it was absurd. And honestly, normally... I, normally, I don't have any like criticisms of any ESPN broadcast, oh, and do. thankfully, like the Hard. Wolves, oh, I, I get, Hard. I get it. I'm also kind of half paying attention to and like looking mm-hmm. at my phone and other stuff, and not really caring. Also, I'm, now if it's like Mike Breen and Jeff Van Gundy and Mark Jackson, They're if it's that, different. if that, if it's that crew, all right, like let's go ESPN yeah. ABC broadcast. That's what I was thinking we were gonna get. I didn't know. Yeah. We got freaking Bob, my, no disrespect to Bob Myers. Who was the other? You're I don't know who the play by. He was terrible. Well, oh my gosh! <laughs> I, he has no It's like, about. yo, just and they, I, and they I, talked I, about the Warriors the time, so much too, right, bro, which no, I get. But the first experience. time ever, because I've ne- and I've heard people say they've done this, and I've never done it. I've always, except for I think I did it one time for like an Eagles game years ago, but. I've never had to mute the television before. Wow. <laughs> I legit, like, I legit was like, yo. He's becoming wow. a Minnesota fan. I know. Fan. You're I'm not, like, you're no. not, yeah, you don't, yeah. <laughs> like, this is, this is like. That's this unreal. is like this, this is, my is life, pissing bro. me off. This like, my life, bro. <laughs> like, yo, this is making me mad. Like, yo, shut uh, up about like we get it. They're the defending champs. They're they're a great team. Like, I, I don't want to come across as a hater. We know how great they are. Yeah. But it's another really good team on the court with them. This game is close. It yeah. was close up until late in the fourth. Why are you just it's just pro Denver, pro Denver, pro didn't say a positive thing about the Nuggets. And then oh, the I'm sorry about the Timberwolves. And then yeah. at one point, like they the 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 uh Wolves made a run and like He's like, yeah, the, the the bench just got one of the best benches in the league. I'm like, he's saying something positive. The man didn't even complete the thought before he was like, and this is what Denver does. They go come down for me. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you can't even finish the compliment? No. Yeah, yeah. He didn't want to finish I mean, the compliment. I'm like, dude, mm-hmm. mute. I was, oh, I, I was so... You would think I was from here. I was, I was, I was, <laughs> I was really upset. I'm proud I was of you really right upset. now. Like, I was... I was really no bothered. disrespect to ESPN Radio because we love our ESPN. Oh yes, radio. we do. Right, yes, right, yes, right. Yes, yes, I'm just yes, saying right. the television broadcast and this and the, the the TV ESPN has never been nice to Minnesota. And it's and I'm 40 and I have never turned on a, after a broadcast of watching a nationally televised game on ESPN and been like, wow, yeah, they really had us. They they really took us you know seriously took us there. Seriously, no, yeah. they they don't care this about us. And, what we're flyover country. That's this that's is, all we are. We no also just what they uh, do. We also do this thing around here called not win championships yeah. over the last thirty years. So yeah. sorry to say, Justified. if you want that kind of attention, you got to actually start winning and win in playoff you still series. You need to be a good broadcaster. Thank you. I that agree. I agree. I agree. Now but I call them trash. But you, you know, y'all know what I mean. Like, I agree. You should still be a respectful broadcaster that can call it down the middle. You know and you're I mean? gonna make like, us wait till nine o'clock to watch that game and stay up to. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> I go to bed at like ten, boys. This is ridiculous. Uh, that's when I'm just starting my shift. And we're in Denver, me? and we're waiting till nine. Those poor people. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah it's. Ugh. Yeah. Just, just listen to the radio or something like that. You know what? Yeah, listen to the radio and stuff. Listen yeah. to the old school way to well, do it. You know what I mean? Well, maybe not in the. Temple. I was gonna say not the Timberwolves. Uh, anyway, <laughs> you yeah. had to tune in. Yeah. Here. <laughs> no, well, it's. What were we saying before I interrupted you, Jason? You were talking about Cat coming back, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes, yes. Cat is coming back for these last two games. Uh, probably will be on a minutes restriction. That was per, uh, per Woj and per Shams over the last 24 hours or so. And yeah, we just mentioned that. Just yeah, get him back in the swing of things. Yeah. Um, Exciting. Time. I'm not expecting. Yeah, and I don't. I'm not expecting anything big from Cat. I don't need to ha- have him have like a big game to like flex his muscles and prove like I'm back, y'all. Look at me. This is like a movie. I don't need. I don't need anything like that from Carl Anthony Towns. I just need the trainers and the health staff to just put him through whatever he needs to to be ready for game one against whoever we play. Which, by the way, guys, honestly, I mean, if we want to think about this for just two seconds, maybe it is a blessing in disguise that the Wolves don't get ah, the number ah, one seed. Ah. Because if we just play it out just a little them. bit, and I would say there's a yes and a no to this question because uh, based off who you're playing. Now, I framed it like this. It is a blessing in disguise if you are trying to avoid playoff pedigree in the first round, i.e. the L.A. Lakers, i.e. the Golden State Warriors. But if you don't care about playoff pedigree and you're more worried about the actual matchups of the teams and like how good they actually are like right now, not worried what happened in the past, then maybe you should be worried that you didn't get the number one seed because that's potentially teams like Phoenix or New Orleans or I'm forgetting the other Kings. The Kings. Kings, Kings, Yes, exactly like that. So honestly, if if you're looking for to play more unproven talents, 
then the two seed might be for you. But if you are looking to potentially play washed up older teams, then the number one seed is for you. It just depends, you know, fan to fan, individual to individual. Are you more scared about teams that are like in the now and maybe on the rise? Or are you more worried about teams that have been there and done it before, but maybe on the decline? What do you guys think about just how that potentially could play out for the Wolves there. Uh, personally, um, well, first off, I don't think the players really care as much, but That's us right, as Matt. fans, um, us as like media members, analysts, um, I'm looking at it like I'm not worried about the Lakers or the Warriors. I just I wouldn't I wouldn't be worried about them if I was the one seed. The Suns and the and the Kings, they they pose the interesting Suns. threats. Like mm-hmm. the Suns, they have the three headed monster that is, you know, KD, Devin Booker, and um Bradley Bill, like yep. we we know about that, Got but they have spot. a similar issue as the as the Timberwolves. They they struggle to close games as well. Like mm-hmm. plus on top of that, they don't have as much chemistry because most of their guys been out for most of the season, so they probably only got 20, 30 games together as a unit, opposed to Timberwolves. Mainly with the exception of Cat, they've been and even with Cat, they've played most of the games together, so they have more chemistry. Their defense isn't as good as well. Um, I think you could really bang with them down low with you know Nurkish down there in the paint. It's really good, but once he comes out the game, they're really thin down in the paint. And so I like I, I, the Suns, again, an interesting matchup because of the star power that they have. Like any mm-hmm. of these guys could go crazy any given night. Um, but I still like it because of, you know, them being th- their size in the paint and because of the fact that I don't believe they have a ton, a ton of chemistry coming into the postseason mm-hmm. and they have the same issue that we have. The Kings, I've said this before. Yes, you have. Yeah. The Kings are an interesting matchup. I know that they don't they don't match up the best with everybody, but they match up well with the Timberwolves. You know, De'Aaron Fox is a quick dude. They get up and down the court very well. They, they He comes off his screens looking to shoot, looking to, to, to go downhill, get a bucket. Um, and then you got to deal with Sabonis, mm-hmm. who has kind of been an issue in the past for Rudy Gobert. And so they they pose an interesting threat. Now, they don't have Malik Monk, though. I don't right. believe he's coming back. I could be wrong, but I don't believe he's coming back. And so the last game that they lost to these guys, Malik Monk went crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, like, took over in overtime. I think he had, like, he went off. I, I think he had like around 40, if I'm not mistaken. He went off that game. Um, so without him, that's going to be a big hit. But you still got to worry about De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis. So it's kind of like no matter what, you're going to have an interesting draw. But overall, if the Timberwolves are who they have been offseason and they are who we think they are, I'm not worried about any of these teams. As long as that the key is the defense. Mm-hmm. They've been the best defensive team all year. Okay. Right. With Carl Anthony Towns, they, they get even better defensively. Yep. Right. So if the defense continues to play well and they continue to travel well, I don't have any concerns. If they get into this playoffs and they stop playing defense at a high level, that's when you should be concerned. Mm-hmm. It's like, yo, where did the defense go? Okay. Because they can score. Cat can score and can score. You know, yeah. Mike Conley can have a big game. Obviously, Nas Reed can have a big game. But the, the their calling card is the, is the defense. Yep. When you have a solid defense like that, you, you're not worried about any of these teams that who defense can't sniff the Timberwolves. In all honesty, they cannot. Yeah, and so and I don't think any of these teams really have a solid matchup for Anthony Edwards. Honestly, no. Like the Kings, and the, the Suns. Yeah, like wait, what you uh, say? And the three bigs, other than yeah. like, I mean, like the higher seeds. Yeah. But like, there's no the higher seeds are match up a little bit better. better but, but yeah, mm-hmm. the lower seeds, no. Like the bonuses, he gives you. He he's a threat on the other side of the ball, but yeah. defensively, he's not really much of a no. threat. Um, I agree so, with I agree and, with you. And Nurkic yeah. is good. He can rebound the ball at a high level, mm-hmm. but he's no defensive ace. And mm-hmm. who's gonna guard Cat? So I, I, I feel fine about it. But they gotta continue to play well defensively. Yeah, the Kings scare me the most too. Um, sure, the More Suns the have. Pe- just question: Do you guys like? And, and you're saying you guys Pelicans, keep talking about the Kings. Like, do you think the Pel? I mean, well, what's I, your thought on the Pelicans? Well. I'm leaving them out of this conversation because they're the sixth seed, and sure, there is still a we chance. We can get a third. I, I understand that. Third, that, that, yes. that could, but based off Oklahoma City's schedule, they play the Bucks tomorrow, and then they play the Mavericks in the season finale. The Mavericks still have a lot to play for in terms of trying to get home court advantage against the Clippers in the playoffs, yeah. and so I think Oklahoma City's uh, got more to face than what the Timberwolves have to deal with that, with Atlanta. And also, I mean, I could also see Phoenix resting a lot of their starters in that last game of the regular season against uh, the Wolves, too. I don't think so. You don't think so? They if there's probably, a lot of, probably, on the line? They, okay. they, they still okay. trying okay. to get if out of the play. Yeah, they're, okay. uh, yeah, they're still in the okay. line if they're here, still so. If that's still the case, I just don't know like just what they're how much they're trying to just get Kevin Durant. Potent- I, I, I say that specifically speaking about Kevin Durant, yeah. just because obviously he's their oldest player and probably their most crucial player uh, as the well. The Pelicans will be um, tough, though. They will. 
they, they will. They so will be tough. that's why I didn't bring them up just because, you know, I'm still holding out hope that we won't have to deal with but the Pelicans. They matched up well. It's, it's, it's a possibility. It's worth it. There we go. We mentioned the Pelicans. There you go. That's awesome. um, <laughs> there's no, I mean, guys, there is no guarantee that the Kings and the Suns will actually make it out of the playing rounds. You know, they obviously have to play each other to play whoever wins between the Lakers and the Warriors. And, you know, who knows just, you know, how much LeBron might have in the tank. I know kind of towards at the end of the season, it's kind of just seemed like he doesn't have a lot or at least enough to carry teams like he used to. Obviously, we Steph Curry can still, you know, get unconscious and like shoot five threes in a row. But I'm still not too worried about either of those teams and how they match up with the Wolves as of right now. Um, and there's there's still a long way to go for. And what I'm actually digging the most, guys, is that, you know, especially because we've identified as not being really a load management team around here. Anthony Edwards, Chris Finch, pretty much everybody has scoffed at that notion. What I'm digging about all this right now is that the playing tournament has to play out and it basically almost gives like the wolves a week of rest. rest. A lot of these teams get a good week of rest pretty much as these kind of things play out with these other teams. And so, so I'm digging that. And so anybody that's worried about the load management with the wolves right now, and admittedly, well, uh, artists, you and I were both at the wizards game and you know, we were enjoying that uh, insanely because obviously Ant dropped 51, obviously 50 cent was in the bill and everything like that. It was amazing. But the, as it was all playing out, admittedly in the back of my head is like, all right, we got Denver tomorrow night. I hope we don't have an emotional letdown or anything. And I, I don't I don't think that was the case. No, the Wolves no. obviously showed up to Denver. That was not the case whatsoever. But still, it's oh, this Minnesota Timberwolves team. It's it's, it's getting the heart. It's getting the heart racing. It's it's breaking hearts at least a little bit. Sure, like I had my expectations a little bit tampered going into the Denver game, but still it's there, there's a lot to unpack with just everything that's going on. And obviously yeah. the Western conference needs to untangle itself a little bit more, but um, no matter what, we got to be good teams in the playoffs guys, yes. right? We yeah. got to be good teams. So no matter when, you know, we got to face them, you know, I'm not going to get too hold up if that's the first round, the second round, the conference finals, even the NBA finals themselves, you got to be good teams in the playoffs. Yeah. And you know, it's just inevitable. You got to run into them. I'm not but, worrying about it as much to be mm-hmm. honest with you, because there's such an unknown right now. Yes. You don't, you don't even know who the matchup is. We don't know who the matchup is. And and more or less, it's not even the matchup for me. It's with this team. Yes, this team is fantastic. Number one defense in the league. Best team we've ever had. So right now, as a Minnesota fan, and I'm not trying to put this into like Minnesota terms, but I'm on such a high with this team right yeah, now. Yeah, that like, as you should And be. there's no real way to look at this team other than their series with Denver last year and maybe the play-in game with the Clippers where we have anything to compare them in the playoff situation. So I we could sit here and talk about this, that, and this, that, and how they match up and how this. This is this is a new this is new territory. It yeah. is this it is really is road. to be a, the to road, be a favorite is, going into yeah, you know this is a road first yeah. untraveled, less traveled for us. So right now, I mean mm-hmm. and I'm not trying to take away from all those great takes, but for, as a I'm just going to sit back Soaking and enjoy this ride. As you and should. no matter yeah. how it ends, if we don't get to the Western Conference Finals, if we don't win the finals, this team is going to be good for a few years. We've got something to look forward to. And I'm not, I, you know me, I hate the moral victory concept. Here. Yeah. But right, 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 I'm right. just saying, like, we can also just look at this as, we don't we don't know what this team's going to do. This oh. team has never, they've been tested all year round, but we don't know how they're going to react in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So we've got a lot of unknowns, and that makes it more fun and just kind of like, more all right, let's see who we're going to play. And I do like that week of rest, though. Normally I'm not a fan for football. If we're talking football, like that bye, I don't, I don't mm-hmm. like that. I like the momentum carrying into the playoffs. But I like what you're saying, Jason, yeah. that week of rest is going to be nice. For, for Carl. Carl, more than anything else, and I swear it seems like Ant sprains his ankle every single game to or yeah. has to <laughs> run into the tunnel for two seconds and then he comes back. I think he needs it and literally the, more than anybody else. And, and the week of rest is a little different for the NFL because you go into the playoffs in the NFL, you got one game. Yeah, that's it's it. One yep. game. You yep. come out rusty for one game, you're, you're going home. Where yep. in the NBA, it's a series. It's a series. Even you if got, you lose game one, it it's like, all right, we got the rust off. Got Let's it. come back game two. Yep. So, yeah, the week is perfect. And, again, for Carl, it's – it's ideal. He get those two games in, get the feet wet, then go back and rest and come back fresh. I I, I love it. I, he's coming back at the perfect time. It's literally, it's lining up perfect. It's lining up perfect. That's great. You know what I mean? That's what so, I'm saying. I'm like, it's a yeah. road untraveled for me. So yeah. I'm just like, all right. I mean, we have this been traveled, but it was 20 years ago. Right. Yeah. And, and, I don't and, remember it at that, all. And that, and yeah, I was a freshman in college yeah. and that was, that's not this team. Yeah. So no. there has nothing to compare to it. All these past, past performances, all these previous things, we can... 
officially say like until we can like if we go in and we lay an egg and we get knocked out in the first round, which probably won't happen. No. We, we oh, have oh, a lot to look forward to. Knock here, on wood. Knock on wood. <laughs> yeah. I don't, and, hopefully and, not. Yeah. Oh. Hopefully not. Although if they did lose in the first round, ratings will be good for Taxi Squad that week. <laughs> <laughs> Let's admit, like we we will have a I good episode if that's the case. The board here at Score North it's will true. be insane. Yeah. If, the, if that happened, and the haters and the trolls and win or lose, we boo baby. Like yo, what's happening right now? Win or lose, we're just fine here at Score North. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So obviously we'll keep an fun. eye. What was that? Yeah. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. It's going to be so much fun. And yeah, it's just a whole different territory that I think Wolves fans, especially younger Wolves fans. And I'm not even a younger Wolves fan. I'm 30 years old. You yeah. know what I mean? But yeah. it's been 20 years yeah. since we even made any type of run. Now, again, knock on wood that we actually make a type of run we, and get I think out of we the are. first round. We will. I we will. So. I, think we are. I believe the Wolves will at the very least be in the conference finals. I, oh, I, I just love hearing that. I love I it. Believe I love it. I love it. I can't at, the, at least. I think if the, if there's any team that will knock them out, it'll be Denver. If there's any team mm-hmm. that will do it, it'll be Denver. Okay. If they play like how they've been playing, that's the one team that can take them. Okay. Well, obviously, we're your home for all things Minnesota Timberwolves here on the Taxi Squad. We will keep breaking this team down a ton. I'm guessing next week we will – maybe we'll know who we're playing in the playoffs. Nah, probably not because I'm guessing when we record next week, it will be in the playing thick game. of the playing tournament. Yeah. And so, I mean, we'll, we'll, we can break that down as much as we possibly can fun. in terms of mm-hmm. who the Wolves might potentially play. Uh, but otherwise, we'll, we'll obviously stay with us for anything going on with the Timberwolves. And obviously, there's still stuff going on with Glenn Taylor, Alex Rodriguez, and Mark glory there was some even news Ooh, that happened that? today i don't know if we have a lot of time to talk about nah, it because obviously yeah. last week we did an in-depth dive about everything going on but all i have to say is that obviously they there's like little press releases being leaked here by both camps but it's just driving me nuts guys that like the taylor camp leaked that thing yesterday about uh Lori and a-rod potentially wanting to cut payroll yeah. yeah but did you have to do it the day of the big game against denver that takes away the spotlight away from the actual game itself this like come like on this can we think like about Glenn. the product here for one second it just i was annoyed yesterday that you know seeing stuff being written and hearing stuff on the radio and stuff and people talking about this just like dang it I want to talk about the actual game itself, but now we're just mired again in this ownership controversy, <laughs> and it's just the timing of all this sucks, and it's just I want to focus on this team, but I can't help but be pulled away by all this drama, and it's juicy drama. It's worth getting into, but it's just like, my God. Yeah. Well, well, I just We just can't it's, focus on this nice, shiny thing that we have finally have, and we just no. can't enjoy it because of all this other it's, crap going on. But anyway, a that's, a, that's it. La- last week I said, you know, we we don't care. And some guy in the comments did was he get, like, did he get yeah, on? He was like, he was like, what we you gotta speak, care. You speak French now? <laughs> <laughs> Whoever that was, I'm with you. Well, because I'm bad. Well, like, like, <laughs> you I called you out on that too. Yeah, I was like, a lot of people was like, what are you talking about? Nah, man, no, <laughs> no we is, do care. Yeah. Like, all right, like, Glenn okay. Taylor is my a, bad. Yeah, Glenn no. Taylor's a sore subject in this town. Yeah. Focus on that if you want to. What he just did yesterday was a perfect example of why he is a distraction in my Well, life. I'll <laughs> say that guy can focus on that distraction if you want to. I prefer to focus on these guys potentially making the playoff. Yeah. <laughs> Look at, you. Look at you. And again, the only you reason know. I truly bring it up, guys, is because there was a report from Shams earlier today, and I don't think this was common knowledge because I saw a lot of people reacting to it, that Tim Connolly has an opt-out clause in his contract after next season. Oh, And remember how last week, how I was really, really happy that even though all of this was going down, that at least Tim Connolly was at least in the building to man the ship? Yeah. Well, I, what if he leaves? I don't think If he, everything I, just goes to crap with these owners and he's like I want to get out of here this place is just a dumpster fire oh gosh and there's already been I mean we've already had mild rumors about Tim Connolly leaving I remember like the Washington Wizards GM job was open and I think he's from the area has a connection to the area or maybe his wife's from there like Kirk Cousins wife was really a connection to Atlanta I don't really know but it's just like oh my gosh if things get really bad between Lori A-Rod and Taylor and we lose Tim Connolly that is truly a worst case scenario in my mind. That is truly a worst case scenario in my mind. So I don't, I don't know, I don't know what's, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what they're gonna do. I'm just, I'm, I'm like, I'm done with it. I know, I know. Thankfully, guys, this the playoffs are about to start. Yeah, and that will truly take all the focus. For Wolves fans, and I, I really don't th- unless just they really are trying to pile on each other right now. I don't think there will be a ton of legal news surrounding the Wolves ownership thing throughout the playoffs. I, th- I'm hoping both sides agree that hey, can we just focus on the actual basketball here? But I just, 
I don't know. We we talk, That was my headline for Taxi Squad last week. How ugly is this going to get? And it has only gotten uglier within the last week. And it's just, my goodness. So, anyway, enough about the, no, not enough about the Tim- Timberwolves. Obviously, we can always keep talking about the Timberwolves, but there's just so much else in Minnesota sports that we got to cover. We got to talk about all these private workouts the Minnesota Vikings are doing, gentlemen. My goodness, the list is long. Jane Daniels, Michael Penix, Byron Murphy the second, who I personally want the Vikings to draft just so we can have two Byron Murphys on the team. That's <laughs> just me. But it seems like literally any top prospect, whether it's a quarterback or not a quarterback, the Vikings are hosting all these private workouts with them. And actually it was reported, I can't remember off the top of my head, I'm sorry, who actually came out with this report. It was somebody from ESPN that uh, the Vikings this offseason in particular have actually put a precedent on doing these private workouts because they feel like it gives them more of a controlled environment with these prospects to put them through drills that particularly the Vikings think are pressure scenarios. For whatever reason, the Vikings think that these one-on-one kind of drills with these players gives them a better read about how they're going to actually handle stressful situations come game time on NFL Sundays, Thursdays, Saturdays, or probably even Christmas days because the NFL says they're going to play on Christmas even on Wednesdays. That's a whole nother rant for a whole nother day. Anyway, gentlemen, like I said last week, it's smokescreen season of all smokescreen seasons. I even saw a report today that Vegas is no longer interested in drafting a quarterback, that they're looking for O-line help and some defensive help as well. But I don't know how much stock we can put into that or pretty much anything that's that. going on. Within the last couple weeks, yeah. I, I'd say that like but two weeks ago, the direction I think a lot of Vikings fans were looking at and where they were going was probably J.J. McCarthy. But now over the last couple weeks, I have no clue what they're going to do. They've met with May. They've met with Daniels. They've met with McCarthy. They've met with Penix. And they might even still do something with Bo Nix, even though they didn't do his pro day or something like that. Guys, can you help me untangle this just web of just, just smoke screens and reckless speculation? What's going on with the Minnesota Vikings? Or is that the point? That's the point. It's a draft. It's <laughs> yeah. all all speculation, all misleading. It's a game of chess. My biggest thing is I continue to say J.J. McCarthy is not the guy for us. I mean, <laughs> the guy the guy had, I think, uh, what, 130 yards against Penn State and didn't. And I saw this on ESPN, so i got to give credit to whoever uh, said this on ESPN. But he had zero pass attempts in the second half against Penn State. The man, no, it, it, that, that team was played with a, a phenomenal team surrounded by great running and great players. I think JJ McCarthy is the biggest smoke screen in the draft and I mm. hope to God we don't. And I did see this and maybe you can confirm this one of you two, but mm. was it Arizona or San Diego that said they would demand three first round picks for Ooh. their as they should. As they should, as but they should. Oh, God, I am, Um that doesn't surprise me if that's true whatsoever. Oh, three first round picks, boys. Like that to me. I know it's our future, but when you have no draft capital this year, zero next year, you're going to give up three first rounders to jump I just I wonder from if McCarthy I wonder if... Okay, hold on. That is also, Sorry, uh, artist, one second, one second. Okay, so you're not willing to do that for McCarthy, no, Grant. No, absolutely Who not. are you willing to do it for oh, as well, of right but, now? But these are stupid answers because it's not going to happen. Caleb Williams, Jaden McDaniels, <laughs> okay. I mean, the top three, and and Drake May. Jaden Mc, uh, Jaden McDaniels? Yeah, Jaden I don't know Davis. if I was... Jaden Jaden. Okay, sorry. I mean, those are the three guys that, that I feel like may be worth it. Okay. Otherwise, you could still get... I mean, you could still sit back like we talked about last Penix. week. You could get Penix at 11 maybe and get somebody else 20s. at 23 or even in the 20s. So unless it's one of the top three guys and you're giving up three first rounders, I don't know. Okay. So I, the, so the, you're drawing the line in the sand with McCarthy. You're yeah. potentially cool with the other three guys, yeah, but McCarthy, but you're, you're just out three. of McCarthy. Okay, we're not cool. going to get the other three. And, I, and I, wonder, I wonder if that is also a smokescreen. Like we want three first, but like come draft day, we put them two first round picks on the, on the table. Y'all going to turn Guys, that's how much it costs for Trey Lance. Oh, good like, point. Like this is the point. This is the cost of doing oh, business. Yay, yay. It costs, yeah, that's just the cost but, of doing business. And yeah. also, if you want to look at a team that a, could actually bounce back from doing that, look at what the San Francisco 49ers have done. They're in Super Bowls, and they probably shouldn't be because normally they got lucky when you. With Brock, though. What was that? They got lucky with the Brock. They pick, did, though. but still, Very I mean, lucky. it's, I mean, it. It, it, it's possible for it's teams possible. to rebound, even if that's maybe a little more lightning in the bottle. Heck yeah. You but, know what but I mean? They did. Yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I just, I, I, uh, I know. Three's a lot. Three is a lot. It's I, a look, lot. I agree. There's two first and a third. I, I, I would try my hardest to not give one. that package up. I would try so hard. Like, look, bro, we, we'll give you two first and a third. We'll give you two first and a starter. 
We're like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but like, I would that. try my hardest to not <laughs> be giving you three first round picks unless, like you said, it's for one of those. I don't know. For me, it just might be two guys. It might just be Caleb and it might be Daniels, honestly. That's I it. That's like, kind of, I mean, I even drew, I was, that May was, that's was, on the line yeah, for you. I, Drake I'm with May you. Is, but we're not going to get either of those. Yeah, Williams yeah. is going to Chicago, no yeah. question. Yeah. Unless we trade up, unless and we they, get into two well, or they three. Say, but did you guys hear the, the rumor? commanders are for sure getting Daniels from what I've from Yeah, what I've and seen. the commanders, okay. there was that rumor that they tried to trade up with Chicago. Did you hear that? But that was kind of a lot of speculation behind that. Chicago not giving that pick. No, why would you? Why would you? No, no way. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the steam around the Vikings has mostly been, obviously, J.J. McCarthy, but I think it's also been Drake May as well. At least I've heard a lot of Vikings-centric yeah. people talk more about Drake May um, out of the other two. But yeah, I'm intrigued by this upcoming visit they have next week with Jane Daniels. I mean, if you think about it, too, that is it's going to be on April 18th. It's a week away. It's going to be next Thursday, and it's a week before the draft. Um, I don't know if this is something you could potentially look at as like, hey, maybe the Vikings are meeting up with this guy because they've identified him as their guy, and that's their, why they're meeting yeah. him with the draft or right before the draft. But I think I also saw like the Patriots are visiting too. So again, I think this does have a lot to do with due diligence. It's just, it's amazing, guys. There's never been an NFL draft in which I literally just have. It's weird. I have a sense of direction in what the Vikings are going to do, and yet at the same time, I'm totally willing to just like let that go and just accept kind of whatever reality might play out because there are just so many different avenues in which the Vikings can take trading up, staying put. There's going to be prospects available for them to draft. And again, I, we, we can't discount the potential of the fact that maybe they don't actually draft a quarterback at they, number 11. I mean, it's, 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 it's if, possible. Uh, it's very Minnesota possible. The Vikings um, do not draft a quarterback in this draft. I don't. I don't. Oh, they, know. They, they will just maybe not as high as we're expecting. You know what just, I mean? If, if they really think a lot of Penix and Knicks, which I mean, I'm, Penix, I'm all for. Knicks, stay away from Bo Nix. Only had three stay interceptions away. in college last year. Uh, I didn't realize that. I don't know three about he only Bo had three Knicks. picks last year. Bo Nix. I don't yeah. know about Bo Nix. I'm all for Penix though. Yeah. I'm all for Penix. I've been on that train. A lot of people. Yeah. Are like, Penix. Oh God, no, please. I think right yes, now. I'll read the comments. Okay. I know what y'all now, be saying. I, and <laughs> that's fine. And I would take Penix if it's at the right time in the draft, but I'm not reaching for him. Oh, no, no, no. no. I'm not, no, no, I'm not drafting, I'm no, not drafting no, no. Penix or Knicks unless it's after 11, 20. And he falls to 11. Oh, yeah. I'm running the card in. I'm running the card in. If I can't trade up and I have to stay at 11 and the Penix is there, I'm and running the card You're crazy. running up for Penix at 11. Our next pick is 108 in the fourth round after that. So, yeah. We don't pick for two more days. <laughs> Again, Quasi's not good. Quasi's not good at drafting. We don't want him to draft and have a lot of picks. You know what I mean? <laughs> Got to accept that reality a little bit. True. Um, now, of course, the, the our show right before the draft, I think we'll all go on record and say, "All right, who is our guy?" We'll go around the room and say, "Like, all right, as of right now, right before the draft, we'll all say, all right, I want the Vikings to draft this quarterback.'" We'll we'll save that for now. I think we all kind of hinted about who maybe we're all kind of leaning towards, but. Uh, in a couple of weeks of Taxi Squad, we'll, you'll definitely get our definitive take about who we want to be the Vikings quarterback if they actually draft the quarterback. If it's three They're first rounders, I'm with you on 11. If it's three yes. first rounders, I'm, I'm with you at Penix on 11. Yeah. And I'm not laying my pick right now, but if, if it's either three first rounders or Penix at 11, I think I'm leaning with you at 11. You have with to. Penix. You have to. I think we could really build on this team with those picks, but I don't know, man. It's exciting. It's, it's exciting. Very exciting. It's, it's, the draft this the year is going to speculation. be lit. Don't it's forget. going to be late. I know. And the, film, sure the Fillmore in particular. The yeah, the Fillmore. It's going to be so fun. I'm so excited for the draft party. And I actually get to go this year. I haven't been able to go nice. in some years because I've had to actually run the board for 1500 ESPN. Ah. I'm going to go be Ross Brendel's right-hand man. I'm basically going to be doing whatever he wants me to do. Nice. And I'm just going to be basically, you guys ever see the movie Stuck on Me? Where it's like Matt Damon and a Greg Kinnear, and they got like they both share the same liver, but they're conjoined twins. I'm gonna basically Matt be Ross Damon. Brendel's conjoined twin for I that. Forgot Matt entire. Damon was in that. Movie. It's a great movie. I it's know. a great movie. Oh my god, I can't believe Matt Damon did that movie. All right, well, Grant, not to sour your mood after talking about a fun movie really quick, but I am gonna bring up the Minnesota Twins now. Right. Look, I. They got they got postponed tonight. By the way, they're uh, they're in Detroit as why? of right now. Uh, oh, in Detroit. Okay. Yeah, they're in like, Detroit. Here. Not not here. Not here. Like, no, they're why? in Detroit. So. It rained for five minutes. Never yeah. mind. I'm sorry. Right. I should know that. I'm wearing a twin. No, shirt that's right fine. Now. <laughs> but look, the record's not terrible We've as only of right played, now. Like, seven games. I feel like. What's our yeah. record? What's our record? Oh, I, I what is our record? I think we've I don't know played, off the top of my head. We played uh, one two against one two four. We played seven. 
See, I can't keep track of it just because, you know, we've had these postponements and stuff. Let's see. We've okay. Seven games. Okay. What's our, what, what are we? Four, four and six. Finally, four and six. Sorry. Oh, that, so took, ten. that took way longer ten than Ten games. But you look at like these other teams, they've got like 13 or 14 games under their belt. I know. It's, well, We'll get there eventually, but yeah. we also had a weird opening week too, where yeah. we like only played a couple games as well. Yeah. But anyway, it's not been great for this Minnesota Twins team, especially offensively. Ooh. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go through this, <laughs> and I know this is kind of just like a laundry list of stuff, but I mean, I just think it speaks volumes. Right now, this offense, which was arguably going into the season the highly touted aspect of this team, right? Yeah. Um, the pitching, obviously, with the reductions of Sonny Gray and maybe some others, we, we took a step back. Maeda as well. We definitely thought that the Twins' offense was probably going to carry the team more so than pitching this year. Well, It'd be so nice far, Royce. that uh, yeah, so far that hasn't been the case. This team currently has the lowest team average in Major League Baseball. They are last in hits, runs, RBIs, total bases. <laughs> they are bottom five in walks and stolen bases, bottom three in OPS, bottom two in home runs, oh. and half of their qualified hitters for batting average are under 200. 200. Yeah. What's, now, our, what's our team batting average? Do you have that? It's like under 200. <laughs> It's like 180 something. I'm I'm not even I'm not even kidding. I laugh with love because they're my um, favorite team in town, but wow. Now, granted, like you mentioned, Royce Lewis has been hurt. Some other guys have been hurt, like Max Kepler. Eh. But still. Kepler. What what is going on here? Why is this offense so inept right now? What is going on? If I hear one excuse about the weather being cold and that it needs to warm up, I'm going to lose it. I would rather I would mm-hmm. rather hear a Giambi brother tell me that the concrete hasn't set yet at Target Field, and that's why fly balls aren't leaving the ballpark. Yeah. Honestly, that's what I would rather hear. Um, I don't know they what the weren't sol- prepared. They weren't prepared. They're hit by a lot of injuries, and I don't think they've had a consistent schedule to catch any type of momentum. If you look, they played... Every we've had everybody's home opener. We played two in Milwaukee. Then we come home and we play one game. Then we have a game off. Then we have a game on Saturday. And then Sunday we get beat up, uh, uh, you know, or we didn't even play on Sunday because that game got postponed. This team has not had a chance to catch a stride. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm hoping. But it is, as we know, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So then how come the pitching is arguably top 10 and the fielding percentage is number two in all the baseball? How come those things are seemingly in because full the hardest swing thing to do and everything? In, in all of sports is to hit a fastball. That's true. Deion Sanders said it that's best. True. He goes, he's like, dude, I could play football all day long, but he goes, the hardest thing I ever had to do was hit a fastball. And Deion is one of my, is one of the greatest athletes of all time. And he Easily. talks about his time and there's nothing harder to do than hit a fastball. And so, you know what? Or any type of pitch. Okay, but, but other but, teams are hitting yeah. too. So, like, what, what is excluded from the, the Twins? Slow out of the gate. I mean, I, I did not expect this. I mean, I, See, I figured yeah. we would be – you got to win your games in April to win the division. They're not doing that. They're not catching any momentum. They're injury-prone. Like, no, I mean, half of our, bat, our, our, our uh, bullpen is out. And like you said, which, Kepler. Uh, which, by the way, I don't have any grief with the bullpen. No, we don't have a single good. guy with an ERA over four right no, now. No, yeah, it's not. So bad. that's not been an issue at all. It's just been the lack of hitting. hitting. Yeah, they and also, hit. and also, it was kind of sad to see Target Field as empty as it was with the Dodgers in town. I know that they got the whole bit where they're closing the upper deck when they're when they don't have as busy games, but it's just man. They started doing that now. I uh, yeah, they they have started doing that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't know. I, I don't that. know. I mean, Timberwolves did that for years. They, they still did. Yeah, they. Um, <laughs> I didn't know the Twins did that. Yeah, this the Wolves year. still have some. Uh, upper deck seats uh, tarped off and stuff. But I bet I'm you those pretty, open up in the playoffs. But I, I'm pretty sure, like the upper deck was completely empty wow. for the Dodgers series. And well, look, I, look, I get it. Like you, you're you're hosting 81 games every season. Like unless you're the Yankees or the Red Sox or the Cubs, you're not going to sell out every single game. You know, Target Field used to be that way back in like 2010 or 2011, but obviously yeah. that was a long time ago, and the appeal of Target Field is worn off and everything. So I'm not. Like terribly upset by it, but still, it's just the fact that you're coming off one of the best seasons that you've ever had. You should have a lot of ticket momentum with the buying public right now, but you had a pretty devastating offseason in terms of building momentum for your club into 2024 that I'm not really surprised that when you have a big draw, the Dodgers should be as big a draw as any team, any road team coming here throughout the entire season. And I know it's April, but but it's Otani just to see Otani. Yeah. And it's just, I'm, I, I was stunned just to see not bigger crowd. I, I was, I wasn't surprised to see more Dodger fans than Twins fans there. I, I'm fully expecting that, but just to see, literally, the biggest draw in all of baseball come to Target Field, and it didn't seem like it moved the needle for a lot of the baseball fans here in town was just, I think, kind of telling. Just 
the situation that the Tins have put themselves in based off the offseason they had and the TV deal and just the they fact that they cut their payroll. They were relying a lot on the young boys, Walner, Julian, and Royce Lewis, to be a big centerfold of this team. Lewis goes out in the first game. Walner right now can't hit the broadside still, of a barn, even if still. he was swinging his bat at a wall. And Julian, he's had some moments better he, this week. I mean, he say he basically won us the game. <laughs> Uh, yes, he actually the had home runs for us Thank on you. Thursday. So I think that that, and then Varlin too, that was another young name that was supposed to, be, and he's pitched okay, but oh, not great. You I know? have no beef against any of the pitching. Yeah, any of just, the pitching. I am totally fine with all the pitching. All of my grief is towards the hitting. Yeah. And it's just like, I, I don't know what the solution is. The, Kepler's, Kepler's hurt. I wish we would have traded hurt. Kepler, to be honest with you. I, I don't really. He hurt. <laughs> yeah. Um, He's not paying attention to what's going on out there, and I don't think the coach is happy with him. And they put him down for Why isn't he paying attention? He's just got his mind on other things. Mm. This not, has kind of been the vibe with Kepler he's, over he's, the few he's years. He's not committed like, to the game. He's, he's, mm. he's a great talent. He's a great talent. He's just not focused. He goes up and he goes down. And if his his ups and downs are so high and so yeah. low that, like to me, I feel like there's a focus situation. And hmm. I just don't think that I think that they're kind of I think they sent a message to him with this little stint. Oh. I mean, because he followed a ball off his leg and they said that that's why they took him, put him on the on the I.L. Well, wait a minute. You played after you hit your leg in that fall ball in the opening day and you played a couple games. But now you're on the I.L. No, mm. this is a, this was a managerial move to be like, get your crap together. Yeah. And I think that's my yeah. opinion. And actually, I, I was caught off guard, too, because they made the trade for Michael Tonkin from the Mets. Which, by the way, another blast from the past. The former right? twin, Michael Tonkin. 11 so, years ago, he played for us. This is how lame I am. Every now and then, I still play MLB 2K13 on my Xbox I 360. There's that. a franchise <laughs> mode that's so fun on there. And obviously, you start in the 2013 season. And obviously, you got some random names on the twins back there. You got the Chris Colabellos. Oh, uh, you got the, the, Darren, the Darren Mastroianni is uh, just a bunch of like, wow, yeah. I can't believe it. Yeah, those guys, the Trevor, the uh, not the Trevor Plouffe, Trevor Plouffe's a bigger name, but like Chris Parmalee, Parmalee. And so, some of those guys too. But I just thought it was really funny a couple years ago when the Twins brought back Caleb Thielbar. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, I still play this 2K13 every game now and then, and now there's still a twin that's on the Twins that's on this game. This is great. And I thought, all right, that's never going to happen again until I hear Michael Tonkin coming back because he's also on the Twins in MLB 2K13. And That's it's awesome. like, all right, I got Theobar and Tonkin both on the Twins again. Let's start another franchise mode. I bought a PS5 ah. like four weeks ago, and I still haven't opened it. What? Yeah. I had the same reaction. Yep. What? And I would imagine people watching That's this. That's the would whole all... point of buying something. We're, we're on a sports podcast here, but instant gratification, my man. You now, buy that, you open that box, you take everything out of the little package, you lay it out there, you look at it. Then you plug it in and then you hear the noise. Oh, mm. come on. Now it's like a new car. Um, yep. She can turn that thing on. It's yep. like that guy in SpongeBob holding the lollipop. Uh, I can explain. <laughs> uh, I don't know what you're talking about, but you brought up SpongeBob. I got I got <laughs> I, I got a deal. Um I got it bundled, and there was a deal because um the new PS5 Slims are coming through. And uh, so they're rolling, uh, they're like getting rid of the getting rid of bigger the, ones. the bigger ones or whatever. So there was a nice. sale on it. It was a Spider-Man 2 bundle. Oh. And obviously, like, you need to play Spider-Man 1 before you can play Spider-Man 2. So I need to get that game. Also, tax season came around. I'm paying to some taxes. Also, I had to fix the rotors and calipers on my car as well. Also, mm. got my niece's birthday here this weekend. So and I've had some money to spend in other areas in which maybe just right now is not the best time for me to be buying $70 video games. So I've just kind of tucked it but away it in the come corner. With a game? What was that? Didn't it come with a game? Yeah. Spider-Man two. I just said that though. I need to play Spider-Man, Spider-Man one. one. Oh. I can't play Spider-Man two until, and there's the Miles yeah. Morales game too. I got to play that as well. Anyway, we've just gone on I love a this long tangent. Yeah. Roast me in the comments section for not busting out that PS five earlier. Do. I know I, I, I'm going to do it here very soon. The first game I want to get is star Wars, uh, f- uh Jedi survivor. I want to play that as soon as possible because I'm a huge star Wars nerd and that's canon to the Star Wars story anyway. Back da, da, to da, Minnesota da, da, sports. Da, da. That's the PS5 report from Jason Stormer. <laughs> anyway, right, right, right. <laughs> anyway, I heard MLB The Show this year is pretty good, too. I got um, that on the Switch. It's fantastic. Okay, oh, there wow. you go. But exactly. it's not, it's, the Switch is graphic-wise, you know, nothing yeah, near what you're going to be dealing with. But yeah, yeah it's fun. It's yeah. Anyway. 
Uh, gentlemen, that's going to have to wrap up Taxi Squad for the week. We got to mention. Just, what'd you just we got to mention. Me? It's Masters Thursday, boys. It is Masters oh, Thursday. I mean, come do, on, do, dude. Do, the do, Masters. Do. Hello, friends. The Masters is on right now. We I did got, watch some of it today. It was just so nice. It looked beautiful down there. A little windy down there in Augusta, but still beautiful whew, sunny late day. Late start because of the wind, but yeah. DeChambeau at minus seven. You got Woods. I mean, he's at minus one right now, tied for seven. The stride looked good with Tiger. It looked like he was walking the course decent again. We might have, you know, have I to play a lot of holes. The next couple days, we'll see how it works. Okay, what are you going to say about Tiger here? Let's have a debate, bro. Let's go. What are you going to say about Tiger? We got to wrap up the show pretty quick, though. Tiger should retire. He's got my last name. We love Tiger. We love Tiger. (laughs) But uh, it's over, huh? I do think he needs to call it a quits, bro. Puh! I do think he needs to call it a quit. Hey, bro. the fact that he's even I out there does, after that bro. car accident that he was in, I think he is honestly a miracle. In 2019. I, I, but in then he 2019, got. It's 2024. That's all right. Uh, Dude, many of these old guys win. At, the, the, golf's different, bro. I golf is that. different. I get that. And that man is the best thing for that sport. I agree. And there's and if he can stick around as long as he can, he needs to because we do not have another Tiger Woods in the ranks. That's fair. And there is not a man that changed the game of golf more than he has. And so as long as he can be there, he should be there. And I agree, I agree if he can just stay healthy. I'm tired of seeing him. Oh, he, he started. And now he's walking off the course limping. Yeah, all right, I, I get it. that. I, agree. Like, that's, that's tough. I get it. That's I get tough. it. That's I my only it. thing. If he could be healthy, I'm all for it. But if every time I see him, he's hurt, I don't. I just want him to call it a quits. That's, uh, that's my thing. And I, I just mentioned it, the car wreck that he was in a couple years ago. Man, if that wouldn't have happened, I think we would actually be seeing like a second renaissance of Tiger Woods right now because watching him in the 20, was it the 2019 Masters? What it was? That was just so magical. It was magical (laughs) watching that. So that's the most fun I've ever had watching the Masters. And then obviously the car wreck put him through an extensive rehab. And honestly, the fact that he's even playing golf right now, the fact that he's even alive right now is frankly a miracle. And the fact that we still get to enjoy Tiger Woods out there at Augusta National is just just great. Even if that, that, we probably won't see him in, you know, putting on the green jacket probably ever again. You don't know. No, I don't you, know. I don't know. You're right. And like healthy, golf's a weird know. game. You can win well into your 50s and stuff, but it's it's just good to have him out there. And I mean, let's be honest. I mean, even, uh, you know, a Tiger Woods who gets cut, you know, who doesn't make the cut is still going to be a bigger draw no matter what other golfer you're going to have there, you know, the Scotty Schefflers, any of them, any of the any of the live guys that actually get to, you know, play with the PGA Tours, PGA Tour guys uh, this time around. So sure. yeah. my, my last quick word, mm-hmm. I'm not going to tell y'all where this comes from, but I'm just going to get it off my chest. I'm going to let it marinate. We can move on to next week. <laughs> the Bears will draft Caleb Williams. The Vikings will get whoever the guy is at quarterback. The Lions will continue to be good. The Green Bay Packers are a flash in a frying pan. Ah, the Green Bay Packers are a flash in the front. I like that take. I like that. Yeah, of course, the inner Vikings fan not, 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 too. Not going to say why I feel that way. Hmm. Not yet. They beat but they, your, are, they beat those Cowboys for you. They did. I'm happy <laughs> about that. They, 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 yeah, you owe you. them a little bit, Artie. You. you owe them a little bit. You I should probably respect the Packers that. more. I, I appreciate them for that. <laughs> How about them, Cowboys? We'll talk. We'll talk more about it off air. I like that. But okay. They are a flash in the front. I love I'm, that. Take. I'm sticking to that until the start of the season, and we'll see me proven right. All right. I think every Vikings fan would like to see you proven right on that <laughs> artist. Too, that is one hundred percent. That would be great if this uh, Jordan Love was just a one and done kind of situation. I don't think he's signed to a long term contract yet with them either. So I don't know. Maybe maybe Jordan Love could end up leaving the Green Bay Packers. I don't think that's going to happen. Conversation for another time. We got to wrap up Tax Squad pretty much right now. Thanks for joining, gentlemen. Thank you everybody for watching and listening to the show. I am Jason Stormer. That is Artis Woods. That is Grant Winkstern. And we will talk to you next time on the Score North Taxi Squad. Until then, take care. Bye-bye now.